Hello and welcome to my video tutorial series RPG in the Box. I am Karsten and as you can see I created a few paths or roads because I want to show you in this episode how to connect your maps. So I will show you how to put a player to a specific position or objects so as a keyword uh, like teleporting and the other thing I want to show you is how to link maps together so you can um, switch to different maps and have also dialogues and choices um, to choose your destination. So we will start with put player. So to put the player anywhere, we can use scripting. So we have the put function. So we can put the player, which sets the player to a position of our desires. And we can define a tile to put the player on. And we can also choose a direction where the player should look, uh, the, in which the player should look. And the other function is the put entity. So we can also put a player or an NPC or something like a chest, uh, as you can see in the picture below. And uh, we can not select the, the direction. So we have to do it with rotation and something else because objects have very specific um, angles and something like this. It's not as easy. And we will stay for this episode by put player. So, and the scenario is I have this gate and this attachment effect. So I made a few particles which are creation, uh, creating something like a void. Yeah? Um, and I attach this to my field with an attachment point in the middle. And we want to use this so the player should say, um, what? No! I don't want to go at this position. Uh, I don't want to go there. So he refuses to go on a specified tile. To do this, we can simply put a script to our tile by create a character and a style trigger. So we create a quick script and save it to uh, to use it in the, in the scripting editor, right? So we call it put layer back. So and now we can edit it in the script editor. So in the first step, we want to display a message. So our character should refuse our order to go to the specified tile. And to do this, we can define our message. So we say, I think we can also do it like this. Um, what? I don't want to go there. So, like this. And we want to say that our character should say this with a character portrait. And to do, uh, to do this, we can define player portraits. So in the first step, we say the character should speak. And we can define an NPC or something else. And we say it should be the player. And now we can go to our player model choose an angle of our destination and we can say we make a um, catch a portrait so we can choose a square of our po uh, player portrait and we can um, change the, the size and then we can press accept choose a position be but i i'm not sure what the positioning is i haven't figured it out and i want to explain it in a later episode where if i covered this so we give an image name like Rex and an image size. And if we use the trim condition, we, uh, we reduce um, white space around the character. You know? So we save this as our portrait for Rex. And we can also give a name to this character. So we don't have just a portrait. We also have now the name with a column um, like this. OK, let's save this. And we go to the script editor, and now we have our player, and we want to put the player back. So, and now we can use the put player function, and we have to define an entity. So, and we can use a tile constructor, but it isn't safe. 
So we have another property. We can use documentation for characters to see that we can read the edges and files of the tiles of characters. So we have a character back tile, and that is not simply a tile at the same level. No, if our character stands here at this position, we have to come from another field or a tile like here. So this, if our char uh, character walks from this tile to this, uh, we have a back direction, which is the field where we come from. And this is calculated from our navigation paths. So it is error safe and we get this exactly this field or null if there isn't a field in the back of us, which is probably impossible. So we can now use the not entity, we use the player dot back underscore tile, I think. Right. Let's check this again. Back tile. Yes, back tile. Right. And we don't want to change the angle. So simply that's it. And now we want to put our script on every single field. We can also put it to the to the model model uh, model properties and replace the models in the map but it's not that complicated so we will do this manually right now we can test our feature in the game so and now our character should refuse to stand on these tiles. So let's try it out. And our character says, what? I don't want to go there. And we are back. So it's a pretty easy thing. And we also added a sound, as you can hear. That's my door sound. I created this with the, the sound of X generator by simply uh, playing with the settings and pressing a million times randomize. This and I also added uh, um, a random speak pitch. So this is the sound file and this is the pitch. So you can uh, record your own voice with wah, wah, wah. And the uh, um, random speaking pitch makes it wah, 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 or something like this. Yeah? So it's pretty easy and pretty cool. So, and now we want to disable this mechanism. So imagine you have a quest to disable this uh, functions and you make the path passable or you kill the boss and you will destroy this barrier or something like this or you found a, a wizard stuff or something um, i choose a lever to disable my field and i created my lever for the ground and also with animation uh, animation from put it on and put it off and to avoid making millions of scripts i added a simple toggle script so I evaluate a condition, and if the property on the lever is on is not true, which is exactly if it is set to false, or, or I don't have any property at all, so then set it to true, so my default lever is off, then set it to true, and play the animation on, and now my lever is on true. So otherwise, I will set is on to false and play the off animation. And that's simple. Everything about the script, I can put it on a, on a, on a lever, on a, a yeah, taste, 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 key, keyboard, something like this. I don't find the word right now. So, um, but uh, anyway, so we add this to the lever and now we want to handle this in our script as well so we need to read it and therefore we need an entity id so let's call it lever one and we will change our script to evaluate the condition as well so we want to add an evaluation condition and connect with our parts 
And now, if we not not self entity property, and our entity is called uh, level one, and the property is called is on, and now I can make it equals to everything, but it erases my settings, so I make by my hands uh, is not true. So if my lever properties on is not true, which is the default case, I will play the message and put the player back. And otherwise, nothing happens. So let's check this out in the first try. I also have to make sure my script is positioned in here too. So it's right. And now let's check this first and then improve the script a little bit. So back to the barrier. I cannot go through the barrier. Right. And now I want to disable my barrier. And I made a mistake. I made a mistake. So let's check this out. Um, lever one. Lever one. Hasn't the script. It's impossible. It's no, 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 no. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, okay. I set the lever ID not to my lever. Instead, I set it to the tile. Uh, it's mostly like this. Tiny stupid arrows. So, let's try it again. And again, we cannot go through the barrier, right? And we disable the barrier and we can go through the barrier. And now we want also uh, detach our particular effects so it doesn't look as weird. So to delete the particle effect, we need a new function. So we can handle this by a character or by a tile as well. So we have an effect attached on a tile. And we can read all effects by tile.effect and we can give a key, which is the key of the attach point ID, which is the attach point ID. So we can check it in our tile. We have a attach point middle. And now we will use this in the script to disable our particle effect. So we can use the detach effect to delete our effect and we do this not at the player instead we use self which is the object where the player stands so the tile of the object and our object id is uh, our attachment id is middle so and now we have a new problem so we detach the effect at the first time and then the second time we get an error because we want we try to detach a not attached effect so we have to check if there is an attached effect and we can do this by simply evaluate a condition and we make this before detaching the effect and we can say um self dot effect like we saw in the documentation um, and it's called middle and with this function we get the effect and if there is no effect we get the we get null so if it is null so we have an effect attached then we detach the effect. And then the second time we step on the tile, there is null, so we do nothing. Okay, simply that's it. And now we can detach 
every single particular effect from the field. We could also do this in a loop by going over the tiles and attaching the, the complete row, but it's a little bit more complicated and probably we will handle this in the scripting part. So, so I cannot go to the barrier. And now I can. Yeah, great. So it's pretty simple, but also nice. And now let's come to the next step. So we handled to put the player anywhere. And it's quite the same with objects. We can set object IDs to the bed or something else. Uh, it's not complicated. So we will go to the next thing to map, uh, to link our maps together. So I have this awesome cellar door. No, not now. So this trap door. And I want to Add it with the function. If the player interacts with the cellar door, it doesn't open. And uh, I link the, the, the chairs. So if the player walks onto the stairs, instead I will link the, the cellar door. If the player interacts with the cellar door, the trap door, I will put in him to another map. And we can do this by using the load map function, like in the first time. We started our game. So I can say load map. And then we give it the name of the map. In my case, let's validate it first. In my case, this is the cellar. And then we need a position to link the maps together. And we can do this by selecting the tile. So my character should stand at this tile and looking to the North. So to get the position, we simply right click and using the copy XYZ coordinate. And then we can use it in this script simply by pasting it. So it is stellar and it is the coordinate and it's the one of what's the and it's the north. Anywhere, let's say north. So I can also use uh, the, the speech marks and the lowercase north, but I use the keywords because if Justin every time in the future changes the string value, the key is remaining constant to north. So it's error safe like this. And we want to. Um, also link the seller back to the house. So if the player steps onto this tile, we will move him to, to Xanti's house. house and to a coordinate. Um, This. Okay. So to the coordinate uh, one in the western direction. This on the west, and simply that's it. And now we will try it in the game. No, we have to uh, to to uh, to save first. So, and then we try it out in the game. So now my house is linked with the cellar, and I also should make the upper floors visible. I don't like it. I have to do this manually, but it's okay. No, sure, it's like this. And now we can try it out. Okay. I have this beautiful trapdoor inside my house. And if I go to the trapdoor and press the interaction key, I went to this cellar. If the loading screen stays forever, you have a mistake in your 
map name probably. So this is a common case or you get an exception. So we link two maps together and this is awesome, but it's not perfect. So a better way would be to give a dialogue. So maybe imagine we want to make a decision where we want to go and I prepared a nice signpost for this case. So I have this signpost with different directions and I also did a, a portrait and um, this is saved uh, in the image folder. And then I, I, here it is, I um, draw something like letters with my image editor and save it back. And so you can manipulate your portraits and give Rex uh, a bird or something like this. Uh, okay. And now we want to use this in the map. So I put my signpost to my crossroad. So here it is. And now we want to make it possible to choose a position or to choose where to go. So we need a crypt. And if we want to do this, we need a function called um, display choices. So let's check this first. Display choices. So we give a message text uh, array, which is probably something similar to a list and a speaker. So like this, and we do it in the script editor here. So. Let's create a quick script and then save it with the name sign post. Oh, it's already existing, so give me a sec. I'm just finished recording of the German episode. <laughs> it's a story. Okay, and we want to save it as in post. Right. And then we can edit this in the object editor. And it's saved by decisions. Ah, why? We did it. No, we didn't. It's an error. Okay. So we want to make a dialogue to choose our destination. So we use the display choices dialog display choices so and now we can say where where should i go and now we have the choices so we can simply make our choices Stay here or to the cellar or the third one is to the beach. Okay. And now we have three choices. And this is something like a list and is indexed. So this is the option zero this is one and this is two and it saves this back to the variable called result yeah? and there is the value save which the player enters and we don't want to say it with an npc okay so simply that's it and now we have to make the map loading so load map and another load map. No, and we missed an evaluation condition as well. So we do it the following way. So we evaluate in condition. So our result, result 
uh, should be equals a number one, which is the seller. And we need another condition. So a variable is equals number two, and it's also result. Okay. So if we choose result one, which is equals to seller, we go to the seller. And otherwise, if it's two, we go to Xanxi, uh, Fishing Cove. And if the player enters stay here, we do nothing. Okay, now we need the positions and the directions. So let's first save this and let's look to the seller. And we don't want to use the letter as well. So let's make another way. So we simply add this door in front of the wall and we will remove the opening function and simply connect it with a quick script to go to Sanchez world and probably to this feed looking to the east. East, 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 east. And here comes our position. And it is Sanchi's house. Let's what? Ah, yeah. e east. East. Right? East. It is east, isn't it? It's east. Okay. So like this. And uh, we want to add the stellar position. So we will be here looking to the south direction. Let's copy this. And we can simple edit with the paste button. Oh. Pretty nice. So, and the last step is to add our fishing cove. So, Sarah, many thanks for your trees. I uh, downloaded it from the asset library from Sarah of Justin Sarah because I was lazy making my own trees. So, and we can also script it back to our Xanxi's house, but I want to avoid it and save the time. So we use this field in the western direction. Yeah, simply that's it. We have to check if we saved every single map with the linking scripts. And now we can use our signpost. So we can go to signpost, interact, and where should I go? So I will press one, stay here, and nothing happens. And I can go to the cellar. And here we are. And our minecart is back because we don't start it from the opposite side. And if we do, the minecart stays here, and we can leave the cellar here, and uh, we can just use this way back. That's pretty interesting. So, and we can also go to the beach, but there is no way back. Beach. Beach. Oh, okay. I probably hit the wrong position. Okay, so everything is pretty nice. And that's a way to give a choice to the player to include a world map with another object tiling. Uh, so you have a, a world map with a city spots and you can move there or you make a, a quick travel system where the player has to pay for. You can, do, you can include this in your scripts and we'll come to this in later episodes. Um, but we can improve improve the user experience a lot by making the decision dialog much more impressive. So let's come to this 
So to improve the decision, we can use the dialogue editor, which gives us the opportunity to make uh, more visual um, interactions and more complicated interactions. So let's start with a new dialogue and we call it also signpost. Okay. And now we can start with a message from an NPC, from a player, just a plain message. We can evaluate conditions, we can run scripts, and we go to every section inside our script. And also we can leave commands for your future you to have a hind where to improve, how to improve the script. So we will start with a just a plain message. Oh. There is a signpost dot. And then we can combine it with other objects from the dialog tool. So we can simply drag it next to our message. And now we want to use the player node. And we extend the player node to a choice split to multiple choices. So and the first is um, go to the seller and the second option or decision is go to the beach. Oh, let's say to the beach and to the seller. So Where should I go? So, and we will, will we want to improve this, and we can do it by adding a background image. So, I made a background image in game by a screenshot. So, you can press your window key and type snipping tool, and so you can make screenshots from your game. And you can edit this with the image editor of your choices. And uh, I include this now with my letters on the sign, and I will keep the aspect ratio covered. So I'm not sure if I have to put it in every single dialogue. I don't think so. And we can also use a character portrait for our dialogue, and we can use player or we can also use a custom and I added the signpost preview. So I want to use this now. And I can toggle my my image direction with this button and also can place it left or right. And simply that's it. And now we have to do the magic. So we have to include a script for our map change mechanism. So we want to do the load map. And we can simply copy this from our scripts. So we can go to the seller like this. OK. And we can go to the beach like this. And simply that's it. it. It isn't that complicated. So, okay. Uh, here we can choose um, if we want to wait until the script is finished, or we can use predefined script. But we want to use our quick script. And now we can try this out in the game. No, we cannot. We have to bind our dialog to our signpost. So we use the script part of the signpost with the script function. And we want to show the dialog. So we use start dialog. And our dialog name is signpost. And now we can use it in game. So Let's check this signpost. It's right. 
And if we interact with our signpost, we get a um, background image with a dialogue like this. Oh, pretty nice. So this is a static image and our game runs in the background. So we can be attacked and something like this. Um, and we can choose where to go, to the cellar or to the beach. So we can go to the cellar and also to the beach as before. So simply this is the magic to link maps in a, a pretty easy, uh, more complicated and uh, a little bit more complicated. And in the next episode, I will show you how to make cutscenes or kinematic things. And the last thing I want to explain you in this episode is the fading in and fading out. So previously we used the put player. And if you imagine you use a teleporter or a portal like this, and it makes plop and your character is at the opposite um, portal, it's not that impressive. Also, um, if you want to use a very easy way for cutscenes, yeah? so I want to show you the fade in and fade out functionality. Um, fade. So fade out is making the, the uh, view of the player black. And we can choose a duration, so the transition time from our current view to the full black. And we can also fade in. So we can fade out, make the transition on the positioning of the player and can fade in back. Uh, my scenario uh, in my head is um, I want to make the player going to bed and then it fades out and the player uh, awakes somewhere in the map and asking, oh, what happens? So you can use this uh, if an enemy knocks you down or something like this. So we want, in the, we want to place the script. So we hide our roof and we want to add this to our bed. So we add a quick script and in the quick script we use the fade out <clears throat> fade out in five seconds and then put player and fade in and fade in in five seconds and we want to show the message display message to say what happened to me. And that's it. <clears throat> we need the position for the player. So, sorry, I have problems with my voice now. Um, so we copy this position in the western direction and we want to edit in the script yes and this tile and that's it <clears throat> so let's go in the house and now if we sleep in the bed, we have a very easy cutscene. So, fades black. And now we are here. So we can add an animation for making the player sleeping or knocked down or something like this. Um, so this is a very first way to um, add a few effects and transitions for making a story to your game and combine it with the world map as i said so that's it for this episode in the next episode we will cover cutscenes and i hope my voice is uh, okay then so if you liked it so far give me thumbs up i would be very excited about your subscription and hopefully i will see you in the next 
episodes. So, bye.